it all seems so chillingly familiar. As gay and bisexual men and women were making limited strides in the struggle for equality not so long ago, a furious backlash followed. Today's media-driven moral panic over trans people and their rights seems like history repeating itself. Over the past few weeks, there have been almost daily articles in the press targeting trans rights and trans people. The tropes are the same. Back then, gay people were sexual predators, a gay lobby was brainwashing children, being gay was a mental illness, or just a phase, and gay rights was political correctness gone mad. Replace gay with trans, and that's the state of the British press in 2017. A Daily Telegraph front page this week was headline Trans Survey for 10-year-olds. The article took issue with the NHS for asking whether children were comfortable in their gender. And so we're back to the 1980s arguments behind Section 28, which barred the promotion of homosexuality in schools. As Margaret Thatcher put it, children who need to be taught to respect traditional moral values are being taught that they have an inalienable right to be gay. In 1986 the press united in outrage at a picture book called Jenny Lives with Eric and Martin, about a five-year-old girl who lived with her father and his partner. It was falsely claimed that the book was being distributed to children a single copy had been purchased for the use of teachers but the point of the exercise was clear, children were being corrupted by the gay agenda, and could even be turned gay simply by discussing homosexuality. And so history repeats itself. Consider these recent headlines. The transgender zealots are destroying truth itself, screeched the mail on Sunday. The skirt on the drag queen goes swish swish swish, wailed the sun, adding trans classes for kids age 2 for good measure. Church, let little boys wear tiaras, howled the Daily Mail, describing new advice on transgender bullying for C of E school teachers. It's worth considering the impact of this. Media Ritigay onslaughts helped legitimize and reinforce a hostile environment for gay and bisexual people. This had two consequences, it made a minority already disproportionately affected by mental distress feel even more misery, knowing that they were widely detested, feared and ridiculed, and it emboldened homophobic bigots who felt their hatred had official sanction. In today's Britain, 8 in 10 trans young people report self-harm and nearly half have tried to kill themselves. How is a minority so afflicted with transphobia-induced mental distress supposed to feel with this relentless media campaign? Note that 64% of trans school pupils have been bullied for their gender identity, and 38% of trans people have suffered physical intimidation. Are their persecutors likely to feel more? or less, empowered by this media offensive. Children sacrificed to appease trans lobby was the headline on an opinion piece in the Times, conjuring up both the image of child sacrifice, and implying that trans people one of the most marginalized minorities in Britain wield sinister, disproportionate power. The pejorative use of the gay lobby is now widely accepted to be a statement of bigotry how then is the trans lobby any different?